In the previous section, we discussed AVID's free encoding and transcoding application, Metafuse, and how to create 3D compliant media that AVID Media Composer can understand. Now that we've created the AVID compliant file, as well as the sidecar file, the ALE file, we now need to bring that media into Media Composer so we can begin to edit. So first and foremost, we want to start an AVID project, which I've done here. Now I'm now going to actually import the ALE file. So I'm going to right click inside my bin and select import. Now you'll see that it pops up right to the folder where I've put the ALE file. Now I'm sure you've used ALE files before and you know that it's a very small file. All it is is data about the heavy, meta, the, uh, heavy media file. So I'm actually going to select this and hit OK. Now when it comes in, I'm going to stretch this window out a little bit, you'll see that all that chocolatey good metadata comes right on through. We have the name of the file, we have the duration, we also have the start time code, in this case zero hour, but we also have the master tape name, which is very important in the conform and uh, finalization process. Now if I double click on this, you'll see that there is no media. That's because the media that I created within Metafuse has not yet been put in the uh, compliant AVID media folder. Now I do things a little bit differently. I tend to have all my media encoded into one file and then manually uh, drop that into the folder that I would like. So I'm going to minimize Media Composer right now. And you'll see that I actually have a folder that I've created called Metafuse Output where I have both my ALE file and my resulting MXF file. Now if I go over to my media drive, you'll see that I actually have my Avid Media Files folder. Avid Media Files, and then within that folder we have an MXF and then a numbered folder structure. You typically want to go to the highest number structure you have within the folder and then deposit the media there. In this case, I'm still on one. So I'm going to go into one and I'm actually going to copy this file into my Media Files folder. Now you'll notice that when I go back into Avid Media Composer, and hopefully you can see it uh, uh, in the window, uh, you'll see a quick window pop up on the Media Composer screen. That's actually Media Composer scanning the database and finding the new media in the folder. So let's bring that back up. There we go. In case you missed it, it was there, I promise you. Now, now I can relink this ALE file, this reference, to that media file. So if I right-click and hit Relink, I now have my relink window. Uh, I know that the media I created is on the Stripe drive, so I'll select Stripe. I know that it's a master clip. Uh, I don't need to match case, and I'm going to make sure that I select any video format. These are just very loose settings, uh, so it's easier to find the media. I'm now going to hit OK, and the media is automatically relinked. You can see the media that we created within Metafuse. Both files are side by side, just as we specified within Metafuse. What I'm going to do now is drop this in the timeline. You'll notice that it appears as a 2D clip. Remember, as we discussed prior, Avid Media Composer, like any other editing application right now, doesn't understand 3D natively. Thus, we have to trick Media Composer into thinking a 2D file, or actually a 3D file, is actually a 2D file, which is why it appears as one video track. Now you'll, now you'll probably uh, notice that this is displayed side by side, which kind of looks anamorphic and quite frankly will give you a headache after editing it. So I like to change how I actually view this. And there's a couple different options for that. If I right click in the Composer window, I have an option called Composer Settings. And within Composer Settings, I have two options. I have both Stereo Frame Layout and Stereo View. Stereo Frame Layout tells Media Composer how to interpret the 2D footage, or excuse me, the 3D footage that you've put on the timeline. Remember, Avid doesn't understand 3D, so we have to tell it how we've brought it in. I can select None, Over, Under, Side by Side, or Interlaced. As you can see, we are side by side, so I'm going to select Side by Side. I hit OK, and you'll notice nothing has changed. That's because all we've done is tell Media Composer uh, what flavor the 3D is in. If I go back into Composer Settings, I now can tell Media Composer how I want to view it. And I have four different options. I have left, right, stereo checkerboard, or stereo interlaced. Most editors prefer to view with the left eye being shown. That's because on set, typically, you'll shoot for the left eye and put the right eye off of the left eye. Plus, when you do a 2D version of your 3D master or 3D uh, project, uh, you usually use the left eye as your 2D output. 
Other options include stereo checkerboard and stereo interlaced. If you were able to use the DVI output uh, of your MacBook Pro or your PC, some 3D monitors, which are computer-based, understand these. So you can have Media Composer playback full screen on a computer 3D monitor, and these would be appropriate for that monitor. 